Hi, I'm Dr. Bob. We're building a vent pipe over the stove. We don't want air to go back and forth through that pipe without permission. Basically, we only want it to come on when the fan's on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a flapper valve to prevent airflow in and out of the attic from the, from the kitchen. And we're going to do that starting right now. Alright, well I thought that I was going to stick that cabinet in there, but uh, then I realized that I need to do this part first. Um, because once I get the cabinet in, I'm not going to be able to put this in or take it out. What I want is a flap in here that, I want to say, mostly blocks air from coming in and out without being pushed up by the fan. Uh, made this long ways like this and then push it down. I really should be wearing gloves because this is really sharp. Uh, mark around there, mark around there. So what I've done is I've taken my marker and I've made an outline of where this is going to go. And the only thing I need to do is mark here because this is going to have a shape to it here so that these guys match up. I do that on the back side too. On both sides that I have make sure I get this exactly right and cut it because this is shaped one way. Although I push it up inside you now okay. Make it one mark that mark right there. Mark that. Uh, no, no. That way, this L marks up the top, and then this will be on. Next step, cut this. Um, cutting a curve with a. It's really tricky at best. might have been the wrong line because I think I needed to cut the inner line here. Yeah, because the inner line was the one that goes inside. It's going to be too big. The outer line was the one I cut by accident. Now, as I said, this is not to block all the air or make it perfectly, but it's just a, it's a big hole up there, and if you don't put something there, air will blow through it and uh, it'll depend on the internal external pressures. Since so this piece here will set inside there and it'll act as a flap. So the thing that I've got to do is get it at an angle where it will... So I, I need a, an axle or something so it can move back and forth like that, flip up and down. Okay. Alright, so here's here's what I've done. Um, I put this basically back in here and realigned it and put that back up inside there and I said, well, I marked where the uh, top of the line is because I marked right here. And then I said, I know that this thing has to go in about a couple of inches, so I marked there and I said, let's put the axle right there. So there will be a flipper right there that keeps air from dropping through. Okay, so I need to drill a hole for a stopper screw for the flap. What that little stopper screw is going to do is it's going to, when the flap inside there comes down, this keeps it from falling all the way down and getting stuck up against it because it can lock inside there. So this little screw here, what you're going to see is that this is a machine screw. And uh, the important thing to notice about the machine screw is that it has this little cut on the end of it so that when it when you put it into a piece of metal that's just got a drill hole there, it'll it'll it's self-tapping, is what it's called. It's a self-tapping screw. Now the question at this point, I need to drill a hole for this. And the next question is how how um, 
what size drill to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the hole needs to be no smaller than uh, the dimensions inside these threads. So I'm going to go inside these threads. I've got my veneer caliper. And this says 0.126. So I'm going to look for a drill here that is 0.126 or smaller. It looks like we're going to be using this one. Okay. So this one is about 0.108. Um, a little bit under. About uh, um, 15 thousandths under what we want. Alright, the other part is that I have this, um, I have this, I need to, I need an axle for the thing to roll on. And I found this little, this little welding rod, looks to be made of brass. Um, it's got a little bit of corrosion on it, but I uh, could wipe it up and turn it. And the other thing I need to do is have holes for this to go through. So, and they don't have to be anything more than just a little hole. So this, this will work just fine. I think this little brass thing is 0.95. So actually, this one should work for both holes, both sets of holes. Okay, so I want this thing to close and open at the slightest bit of air. It has to be heavy enough that it'll drop, but just the slightest bit of air pressure should tip it up. So here's what's going to happen. This is the screw that's going to be the stopper. It's going to stop at the screw inside, but I need it to I need it to be balanced perfectly so that it's going to fall on that. Now, balanced properly, it's going to fall down and land on that screw. And so it needs just a little bit of air pressure. So basically, a little bit of air pressure will push this thing open. It's a tiny little bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark those spots where the axle needs to be. Now notice I'm balancing this thing, but it needs to fall. Make sure it falls. This is where this is going to be. Okay, so that's where the axle is going to go through. Okay, so now I know it. I decided to drill a couple of holes in here. If this doesn't work, I can always go to the tape thing. Now, I'm doing this on the kitchen table, but I've got a piece of junk wood under here from the cuttings from the other day. Um, there's no way, because if I did this on my table, I would have a hole right there right now. So I'm doing this on top of this little piece of junk wood. You notice I'm putting right at the tip of this, uh, this mark that I just made, and that makes sure that I've got it there. I'm just putting two holes in it. I think I'm going to need more than that. Okay, we're through. I guarantee you, try to drill a hole through one of these pieces of steel, you're going to go through whatever's underneath it, or go into whatever's underneath it. So now the next step is, I think it's going to be to grab a, now that's all good, this will go in here, but we need to bend these guys a little bit so that it'll accept this and, and take it across that way. Grab a needle nose pliers. Okay, so I've got some needle nose pliers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bend here. It's going to try and bend this down a little bit. I'm also going to go this way on that. I'm going to get the pliers inside here and bend that up. So we're going to deform the plate just a little bit. Alright, so that kind of sort of goes that way. Do the same thing on this side right here. A little bend. And then we get the pliers down the side there and bend that up. Now we're going to try this and see what happens. Okay. 
It's just got enough friction. I can. Oh, you yeah, don't need to do anything else. Okay, it's got just enough friction that holds it in place, and it should. Whenever I have uh, a little bit of blowing, air blowing in here, just the air airflow should just flip this right up. Okay. The next thing I need to do is drill the holes for this, but I need to match up exactly where those holes need to be. So this should kind of go like that, and it sits in there like that, and it axes the flap. So something will stop it. I got about okay, so that matches, matches with that. Okay, so here's the match point. And that point right there. And then straight down from that. And the way that I'm going to get those marks is I have to measure. So I want the axle right there, and that's going to be maybe five and a quarter inches. Gotta make sure it's straight too. There is. Here's the first drill Same thing over here. Three quarter inches. There's the second drill hole. There. So I'm putting a glove on to hold this thing. I'm putting a little pressure on it, make sure not to get my fingers under there because it will go through your fingers. Do something else. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, "How are we going to test this out, Dr. Bob?" Well, this is how we're going to set it on top of the, uh, the vent hood. Or the vent yeah. vent hood. Set that down for a second. And get the locker from this guy right here into the shape that it's eventually going to take. Thank you. 
done is I've uh, altered the shape to um, interrupt the, the shape. I, I bent the uh, I bent this to interrupt the shape of the wing, and what that results in is a little bit more opening and a little bit more airflow. Okay, so I moved the holes back. You might be able to see. I don't know if you can see these or not, but I moved the two holes. One right there. It's probably too dark to see. Maybe it isn't. But I moved these back a little bit, and it works a lot better. You can see that it. Uh, if you turn the fan on, it just pops straight up, except that it cups all the way back, and it even works on low. So it gives a little bit more pressure as I get a little bit more fan. It blows up right. So it works very nicely with one tiny little bump. Okay, now when I shut off, it's stuck there. <laughs> so what I'll need to do is put a stopper screw right there to keep it. And right now I don't see it having any problem popping back up. I mean, uh, I don't know if I need a second stopper screw over here or not, but it won't hurt. But I definitely need one there to keep it from flipping all the way over, because once it flips over, gravity kicks in, and I don't need that. It's open. It's stuck open. So, we'll put the stopper screw in. That's it. Okay. As you can see, put the stopper screw in, and its purpose is to keep this from going up too high. And does it work? Of course it does. And I've decided also I'm going to put another stopper screw right over there. And uh, this is because this thing could get lodged in here. And if it does, it's not open. Like having it stuck back in. So it does really need the stopper screw over here also. That's gonna do that and then the last thing is the grill and then up inside here it goes and then the cabinet. So all right. thanks for watching my program. If you like my videos be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for an organized listing of my YouTube videos, go to my website, www.wherearemyplacebos.com, and click on videos. Have a great day.